Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another exciting discovery in regards to the origin of galaxies, in regards to the origin of supermassive black holes, and in regards to how galaxies evolve, become larger, become more massive, and turn into something that you see right here. Or actually, a discovery of a very important missing step. How exactly do galaxies like the Milky Way become so big over time, and how exactly do supermassive black holes in the center grow large as well? With the answer to all of these questions being right here. An extremely recent observation that involved a very complex search using various telescopes that sort of shows us a missing step in the evolution of galaxies. What you're looking at right here are dwarf galaxies. Or actually, to be more exact, massive black holes inside of those dwarf galaxies on the collision course. Because super recently, the scientists using Chandra telescope that can see things in the X-rays discovered a pair of very distant merging galaxies that are just extremely difficult to see using any other telescope. And this was the first ever discovery of dwarf galaxies merging together. Up until this point, every galactic collision discovered so far has only involved much larger, more developed galaxies, such as various spiral galaxies like you see right here, or various irregular galaxies that eventually form something a little bit more hectic and sometimes become extremely large elliptical galaxies over time. But because these are so common, yet no smaller galaxy collisions has ever been detected, it sort of created a bit of a mystery. How exactly do these larger galaxies form, and how do they grow massive over time? Well, over time, because of the observations coming from our own galaxy, or from some of the nearby galaxies, it became pretty clear that the larger galaxies have to form through the collision of much smaller dwarf galaxies, such as the satellite galaxies of the Milky Way. For example, we know that the large and the small Magellanic clouds that you see in the bottom right corner will eventually make their way toward the center of the Milky Way and will eventually combine with our galaxy in the next few billions of years. And this has been observed pretty much everywhere around us. But the question is, how did these galaxies form? Did large and small Magellanic cloud just kind of appear out of some kind of a large dust cloud or did they also form through various smaller collisions of even smaller galaxies? But even more mysteriously, how do certain dwarf galaxies acquire really, really massive black holes in their center? And this is actually a really good example from, I think, just like a year ago. A galaxy known as Leo 1, not so far away from the Milky Way. Although, in this case, it's not this bright object. This is just another star. The actual galaxy is barely visible, and you can maybe see it as a kind of a diffuse cloud to the right of the star itself. Now, that's Leo 1 and it seems to possess a very massive black hole in its center. It's a dwarf galaxy with a black hole that's about 3 million solar masses. Only a little bit less massive than the black hole in the center of the Milky Way. But how exactly did that come to be? The origin of such a black hole would be very, very difficult to explain using modern science, using modern explanations of galactic evolution. And since the scientists have never actually seen dwarf galaxies merge, it kind of created a bit of a problem, or actually a big problem, because we obviously have a lot of observations of galactic mergers, but nothing on a small scale. Although, here we have to be realistic. It's not because they don't exist, and it's not that the scientists haven't tried to find them. The actual answer to all of this is much simpler. And it's sort of even visible right here. These galaxies are just so, so, so difficult to see. And even their collisions would be almost invisible as well. And even though we can kind of see large Magellanic Cloud and small Magellanic Cloud relatively close to us, even when looking at the nearby Andromeda, which is about 2.5 million light years away from us, detecting anything around it becomes a challenge already. Which is why detecting dwarf galaxies even farther away becomes an extremely challenging task. And so their collisions have never really been observed by anyone. Until now. And their collisions have only been seen because of the observations in the X-rays using NASA's Chandra Observatory. And here, by combining the observational data from Chandra with the infrared observations from the WISE telescope, but also optical observations from the Canada France Hawaii telescope located in Hawaii, the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below discovered two pairs of merging dwarf galaxies whose emissions become very easily visible in the X-rays, but are also visible in infrared and using optical observations as well. Implying that these are not just black holes, but these are black holes located in much, much smaller, much dimmer galaxies. By definition, dwarf galaxies. But extremely difficult to detect galaxies barely visible in optical light. Although when combined, these sort of look like this. This is the merged X-ray optical observations. 
And because these are the first ever discovered, and obviously so rare, they even already have proper names. The first pair of galaxies, known as Abel 133, is roughly around 750 million light years away from us. And the scientists decided to name this particular object Mirabilis, which is also a name for a type of a hummingbird with a very long tail. And so they named this because of this long tail that you can see in the image. And then we have Abel 1758s that are actually even farther away, approximately 3.2 billion light years away from us, or about four times as far, with the names currently being Elster and Vinteuil, named after two artists from the novel by Marcel Proust, known as the In Search of Lost Time. But both pairs of galaxies are also in a different stage of a collision. For example, the one on the right still has a kind of a star bridge formed between the galaxies, which means that they haven't really merged to the same extent as the galaxy on the left, with the galaxies on the left already forming a tail and already interacting, forming something very similar to the iconic antenna galaxies, which are obviously much, much larger in size. This is one of the largest galactic objects known to us. But in comparison, these are really, really tiny. Here, a single galaxy contains approximately 3 billion solar masses, which is probably around 5% or even less of what we have inside the Milky Way. But because this is how the scientists believe the larger galaxies form over time as well, this is a really crucial discovery, especially because now the scientists have a technique to try to find even more. Although I guess the main reason the scientists got so lucky in this case is really because of extremely powerful black holes in both of these dwarf galaxies that became very easily visible as they started colliding. So kind of like similar to the Leo 1 galaxy that might one day experience something similar. But naturally, there are probably so many smaller galaxies with smaller black holes also colliding pretty much everywhere around us, but we just can't really see them because the effects are much smaller. And although we might see them in the optical light, and might even see their interaction to some extent, the scientists really have to see the interaction in the X-rays or at least the infrared light in order to confirm that these galaxies are colliding and are forming larger objects. And so far, this is the first time this has ever been done which officially now makes this a new type of an object. The scientists refer to them as DAGN, Dual Active Galactic Nuclei, DAGN for short. But obviously, if we don't find more of these galaxies in the next few years, especially as the telescopes become better, this might create a new problem. The problem being that there are so many large galaxies all over the place colliding all the time, but just not enough smaller ones. Why not? Well, the chances are we are going to be finding smaller galaxies once the new observations are made and once the scientists figure out how to combine all of these multi-wavelength observations to find more of these smaller objects pretty much all around us. So at the moment this is also a kind of a proof of concept, a new technique developed by scientists in order to one day discover even more of these objects by combining X-ray observations with something else, possibly the new observations from the James Webb Space Telescope. But I guess for now, well, that's pretty much it. An important confirmation that so far the galactic evolution theories have not been disproven and looks like the galaxies do form the way that the scientists believe they form, but this can only be confirmed if more of these objects are discovered in the future and especially much closer to us. Right now the distance is a little bit too far. Even the closest one of these is 750 million light years away from us, much much farther away than some of the closest large galaxy mergers detected in the last few decades. But because this is a pretty exciting discovery, we're going to be talking more about this once there are some updates or once the scientists figure out something else really exciting about these two galactic pairs. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.